Welcome to Pro Football Focus. James Empey on Skype via the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. James, right now you look like a man who would be Porter Rockwell's bodyguard. Uh, how would you explain <laughs> life with spring ball on hiatus? Man, it it uh, it's kind of bummered spring ball get cut in half like it did, but uh, I feel like everybody's trying to see silver linings and positives and, and keep working any way that they can, you know, stay on top of their schoolwork. So it's been, it's been good, but we're missing football. Absolutely. Physically, how are you staying in shape and, and how are you staying mentally sharp with no spring ball? And then we don't know what's going to happen this summer. Yeah, so right now I think everybody's just trying to work out any way that they can. Um, our strength staff has been awesome and sending out some uh, a whole bunch of home workouts and different things like that. So um, a lot of guys have been been trying to do that and stay on top of their schoolwork, stay mentally sharp that way. And we got all the resources with film and all that. So it's been it's been good. It almost feels like uh, being back on uh, a mission because you don't have the resources necessarily where you live, although maybe at your house you have way better stuff than Portugal where you went on your mission. But does it remind you of that at all? Like, okay, I got to kind of figure this out and be motivated myself. Yeah, you know, it, it, it kind of does. You got to be a little bit creative and, and find new ways to challenge yourself. And, and that's the uh, that's the goal and the challenge in, in and of itself, you know, trying to trying to keep at it. James, one of the challenges of being a high-level athlete is to maintain uh, controlling the next thing and maintaining an attitude of optimism. So when you hear things like, hey, golf is going to reschedule the three major championships on U.S. soil for later this year, and you see baseball players are putting together a plan that maybe they could be back in training camps by May, how does that affect your emotions in getting ready for the football season? Oh, it it uh, it just makes me excited because I know the – I know the NCAA is going to find a way to, to get everything back rolling again and and make up for, for what was lost over this time. So when, when I hear of things happening like that for other sports, it, it makes me um, excited and optimistic for, for the future. Hopefully we can get things rolling sooner than later. And that would be awesome. Let's say that it doesn't get better and it has to be moved to, say, the spring or something. Would you be okay with that? Um, yeah, just as soon as we can play football. If it's in the spring, let's let's play football. You know what I mean? There have been all kinds of options thrown out there, too, some of which were like, okay, play October, November, and then resume in February or something. And I thought, you know, I just don't want December games <laughs> in, <laughs> in Pro Bowl. I don't know how you feel. You're the center. You're snapping the ball. you got to have a handle there. What would that be like? I mean, besides hey, playing it, one bowl game, right? You know, it might be a little cold, but rain or snow, it, if we're playing football, we're playing football. So, Spoken like a go. true offensive lineman, yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, James, this is a little off topic, but something we need to address. Jerem is adamant yeah. that you go by gym now, that you're no <laughs> longer an underclassman. You've matured into gym, I feel. What, what do you think about that proposition? You know, I'll, I'll tell you what. They, uh, every, everybody in the whole line room has a nickname, and, and uh, I, I didn't have one for a while, and it's starting to become Jimmy. <laughs> and so uh, it, as, as soon as you get a nickname that sticks, then then you, you know, with the old line at least, then then it's going to stick forever. So, I mean, everybody's in the room got one. We got some funny ones. So it's a uh, it's, uh, term of endearment, I guess. Um, are there others that you can name uh, for us that are appropriate for BYU? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, let's see. Tristan Hodge is Tree. Okay. Yep. Shannon is Chando. Clark is Clarky. Uh, Blake Freeland is Groot. Groot. <laughs> That's uh, right. Brady is Brad. <laughs> time is Time Time. So we got we got all sorts of stuff. That's great. Uh, oh. does, does Eric Mateos have one? Can you give your coach a nickname? Or? Um, he hasn't got one yet. He hasn't got one yet. Okay. We're working on it. It's okay. early. It was year one. This is year two. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, we'll give yeah. you some time. For now, we'll uh, we'll be pleased with uh, Groot and Brad and Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I love those Chando. That's great. Uh, Pro Football Focus has uh, given you some flattering uh, acknowledgement and rankings, and we've talked with you about that a little bit. One of the latest was 10th uh, best returning offensive lineman in the country. Um, it, w when did you when did you feel like okay? I or and maybe you haven't. I don't know. When did you feel like hey, I'm pretty good at this, but I still want to get better. Um. You know, it, for the most part, it's always just feeling like you got to get better every day. You know what I mean? It's it's always nice to hear somebody, uh, you know, think that you're playing well. But uh, to me, I feel like it motivates me even more to prove everybody 
um, that I that I'm better than that. You know what I mean? And so, um, and I I feel like that's how our whole line feels is is sometimes um, you know you hear the praise and you try not to drink the poison and um, you just work on being the best you can be because really you're only as good as your next play. So um, that's that's I guess what what I'm focused on, what we're focusing on as an O line and as an as an offense this next year to uh, to just. Uh, focus on the next play and be the best we can be and not drink the poison or dwell on the past. You make a great point because there's a certain <sighs> confidence that could uh, buoy you up from the praise, right? But you've you've said don't drink the poison. It doesn't make you better per se, right? You, you've got to be challenged. I like that point you made. Who's the best O-lineman on the team, by the way? Ooh, that's a, that's a tough question because everybody's so good in their own different ways. You know, everybody kind of has their own edge that they play with. Um, Brady's played so good in the first two weeks of spring ball. It was nice to have Tree back. Um, Channing was playing at a high level. Clarky is just Clarky's nasty. Um, we got so many guys. Groot <laughs> Blake is uh, <laughs> he's um, he's he's making his way into the picture and playing really really good and and improving every day. So you know that that's kind of a loaded question, but I think everybody's playing um, was playing you know for the two weeks that we had at better than they were in the fall and and that you know that's the goal is just getting better every day and so i don't, I don't think it's i don't think it's who's the best o-lineman but um who the the best five guys that we can get out there at the at the same time you know and that's that's what we try to figure out every day in practice james you have snapped the ball just last season alone to three very capable quarterbacks how much do you have to alter your game depending on the quarterback that you're snapping the ball to not much at all um those those guys are good and they're they're versatile and they come in and do whatever they're told and our offense is is meant to be run with whoever's back there so uh not much changes we've talked about this after a practice um the quarterbacks come in and out right but you'll stay on the first team there uh and and sometimes you'll snap the ball to a you don't even know which quarterback it is behind you right sometimes yeah some, sometimes I, I don't i don't really know their rotation i'm just focused on the next play you know so sometimes <laughs> That You'll make... be like, hey, wait, that was you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Jaron now. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, we, we, we read a funny article by uh, Ty Detmer um, where he, he said in the 1989 game against Utah, he, he was so good they pulled him after three quarters, but he had to use the bathroom. So he asked Lavelle Edwards if he'd go to the bathroom. Anyways, he goes to the locker room. It's locked. He goes and uses a public restroom, which is insane, <laughs> right, for Ty Detmer. Have you had anything crazy like that during a game where you're like, shoot, i got to use the restroom right now, or I need to leave the field for any minute? Because you're the starting center. you got to be out there. Yeah, I've, I've, never, I've never had an issue like that, but that's, that's really funny. Imagine, imagine being in the stall next to Ty Detmer in the middle of a football <laughs> game. That'd be, that'd that's be crazy, awesome. right? Well, and he, it, it was against Utah, and he's thrown it at that point for like 350 yards on 18 of 22, and it's like, hey, Ty, uh, you're having a nice game today, man. Hey, good, good game, man. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Ty Detmer, I know your dad is uh, very close friends with him. How much does your dad, Mike Empey, still coach you up personally? Um, a lot. It, it's uh, I've said this before. It's been cool to kind of find like see him as as dad instead of coach. You know, with with football and things like that, because he he coached me all through that that first year of college. You know what I mean? Ever since I was little, he was he was coaching my team. So um, now that he's dad, he, he tries not to to be as uh, coach like, um, but he still, he still finds ways to, to help me out and coach me. And when I have questions, I'll, I'll ask him and he'll, he'll help coach me up. So it's, it's definitely a really nice resource to have. And, um, but it's, it's been cool to, to kind of see things change a little bit and still have dad and coach, you know, describe the difference between the two. Um, <laughs> coaches, coaches are a little more in your face. And so it, as his role as dad coach, he's a little bit less in my face and a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of help out with, with some other things. So it's good. James, uh, let's finish with this, a little lightning round. I'm going to say the name of one of your teammates, and I want you to describe them in one word. And we will Ooh. start with Tristan Hodge. Cultured. Ooh, okay. Cultured, Yeah. He, he dips into all kinds of books and comics and movies, right? Okay, very good. Bracken L. Bakri. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, a quarterback, <laughs> Zach Wilson. Um, 
shoot. Uh... <laughs> Your hesitation says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, hey, he needs more than one word, so we'll we'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay, <Got> nothing. <laughs> Let's you all three quarterbacks. To be fair, Jaron Hall. Um, versatile. Mm-hmm. And Baylor Romney. Um. Uh, let's see. What's the word? Um. What's the word? Uh, efficient. 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 Okay. I like that. Good words. Yeah. All right. You have passed the and test. Zach, Zach is baller. He's oh, baller? Nice. Okay, I thought you were going to yeah, say pretty yeah. boy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it came to mind, but he's more of a baller. And there's a dash in there to make it one word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. James, great to talk to you, man. Uh, we wish you continued health and success in uh, your unique off-season training programs. And I can't tell you how much uh, we are hoping to see you in August. And this thing gets cleared up very soon. Yeah, I hope so, too. Let's let's get back to football as soon as we can. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, man. Take care. James Empey on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Love James. He's really good. Uh, he is the best player, um, high, like highest rated player, perhaps, on BYU's team. Maybe he or Brady Christensen, right? Perceptually, he's not rated at all. You don't think about the old lineman. That guy's really good. He's going to be an BYU's NFL player. lucky to have him. He'll be an NFL awesome. player. Coming up, which BYU athlete walked his dog and pulled his truck at the same time? <laughs>